Welcome to Other Nerdy Stuff, a catch-all video series of mine for things that just don't fit into the other topics I cover. In this episode, I'm going to discuss the first large-scale LEGO set I did as an adult back in 2020. Retired set 75244, also known as Tantiv 4. If you aren't familiar, Tantiv 4 is the very first ship seen in Star Wars, in the iconic opening shot where Princess Leia is fleeing Darth Vader over Tatooine. And this whole scene was retconned as a continuation of the end of Rogue One. While technically not listed as an Ultimate Collector Series set on the box, despite its 1,768 piece count, this set gets the full treatment as if it were a formal member of that series. And that means the elaborate instruction book has an interview with the team that designed the set. Just look at these three smiles. These dudes are living the dream and clearly love their jobs. That LEGO shines a spotlight on the folks that design these sets is extremely cool, and opposite of what Atari opted not to do during the 70s for its game designers. That Atari decision led to the formation of Activision, but that's a story for another time. These LEGO Star Wars teams typically get access to the Lucasfilm archive so they can make these sets as accurate as possible. While some of the photos in the instruction book have been seen in other making of books and documentaries, some are unique, and the detail in that final product is better for it. This is not the first time LEGO created a Tantive 4 set, so among the things I appreciate about the interview with the team is when they reveal the choices they made in an attempt to make this larger set different from those past sets. In particular, this set paid a lot of attention to Tantive 4's engine array. As we'll see when I show you my build-out, there's more than one bag for that portion of the set, and that's where a good percentage of the overall physical weight is. The graphic designer spent a lot of time on the minifigures. If you look closely on his page, he's got a design sheet for Bail Organa, which had to be approved by Lucasfilm. And he mentions in his interview that he paid attention down to the insignia on the belt buckle, which is awesome. This is a 13 bag set, and I'm one to savor the experience rather than trying to get it done as quickly as possible. It took me a couple of weeks, 30 to 60 minute blocks at a time. I like to sort the bags by color and sometimes by shape to minimize piece hunting so that each construction step goes a little more smoothly. I'll put the smaller pieces in a sandwich bag to reduce the chances that one of them ends up on the floor. The first bag is pretty simple and lays out the basic spine, from which everything else will hang off of later. The second bag builds out some support structures especially at the back end on the right, to support that heavy engine array to come. That third bag begins some interior compartments in the middle, where figures can sit around a table. We also get more support structure that parts of the engine array will get plugged into. Take note of those blue pieces atop that small column. Bag four has us turn the whole set upside down, so we can add the undermounted gun towards the front, and add a support column for the engine array, similar to what we did in the previous bag on the top side. Bag 5 has us add the first of the 11 engines, starting with the two center on the underneath side, connected directly to the support column that we built in the previous bag. Notice now there's additional support structure to the outside of each, where we'll attach the next two engines. As promised with the sixth bag, we complete the set of the four bottom engines. Notice that these new two get longer, more decorated noses than the first two, but that their tails are aligned perfectly. With bag seven, we take a break from engines for a bit and start to work on some of the front adornments to give it some of its final shape. And bag eight has us do some of the same with the middle portion of the set, giving us curvature to the central tube and some additional winged elements. A big moment happens in bag 9 where we create and attach the escape pods that the droids use to get away from the Imperials in that opening movie sequence. Here's a close-up showing that R2 and 3PO both fit inside one, just barely. Getting this scale right so that the figures fit 
but without altering the overall size of that component of the ship, must have been really difficult. Notice we also now have additional support structures for our remaining engines with these gray rectangular pieces. They plug into those blue pegs that we built on top of that small column back in bag three. We had a whopping five engines in bag 10. The three in the middle of the array have no noses, but instead plug into the support structure with just tails. The middle two on the top row have more elaborate noses than their undermounted counterparts, but you can see the space in the gray support structure where the final two will be attached. And that's what we do in bag 11. We add those last two top engines with their better looking noses than what we have on the underneath, and the iconic engine array is now complete. Bag 12 has us put more final shaping on the middle section, but also add what appears to be a decorative communications dish, but what is in fact a key support structure for viewing. The skeleton is constructed in such a way that the communications dish can support the weight of the entire set. I don't choose to display it this way, but this little detail enables you to hang it from the ceiling if you'd like. Notice how the balance point is towards the back, and that's because of the weight of that engine array. The final bag has you complete the front of the ship in all its glory. When I first completed this during lockdown, I displayed the Tantive 4 like this on a tabletop next to my Steamboat Willie set, and underneath a Disneyland lithograph I have. The amount of detail in the final product is impressive, and the passion that the design team has for the subject matter shines through. They got the sizing scale just right, and the ability to support the whole set just from that communications dish was a really nice touch. I have to admit I was a little intimidated by the high piece count when I revisited Legos as an adult, and this set got me over that, opening a larger world to me. That's it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed my bag-by-bag -bag reveal of LEGO Set 75244 Tantive 4. Please support the channel with a like and subscribe, and thanks so much for watching!